Five. Lady Ada, what is this thing? Hey, this is a party. This is a uh, show and tell that we have every single Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. Welcome to show and tell. This is where up to nine people come here to, into my room. It could be more house. than nine because there could be multiple people in the same camera. Nine computers with human owners could show up with their projects and show off their projects and show and tell. So we're going to call on people in the order. We, we see the little Show off your project. Take like you know three to five minutes. If there's people showing up, maybe we'll uh, we'll try to squish. If not, you can take a little more time. We'll start with Tony, then Noah and Pedro, and then Roberto, who hopefully has a lizard. <laughs> you know, once you start showing lizard projects, then after that, it's everyone just. You're a lizard guy. I love lizard. All right, we're gonna start with Tony. So Tony, cute. what you got hey. going on this week? Hey, yeah, yeah. So I've been playing with uh, software defined radio. So there's a little dongle in the store, the RTL SDR. And it's uh, originally used to be a TV tuner. So you plug it into your PC, and you can tune the digital TV stations uh, and view all the, the channels and things. But people found that the firmware is really flexible, and you can basically turn it into an arbitrary uh, software-controlled radio where uh, you tell it, you know, tune this frequency and pull in samples of info. So there's a whole neat little kind of system of uh, libraries and tools and things that have sprung up around it. So you can do all kinds of crazy stuff like listen into FM radio. That's maybe not so crazy, but uh, you can listen into uh, the planes, uh, airplanes, and the transponders that they have that say, you know, here's my location. And there are kind of cool websites you can look at that track all these things. Uh, really, any radio frequency within a somewhat limited, I think it's like uh, on the order of like 2 to like 400 or something megahertz. Uh, so it's not everything, but you can get quite a bit. Uh, so I'll show you real quickly uh, the project. And, uh, of course, Cat in the Box. So awesome. <laughs> it's yeah, more than just me. <laughs> uh, so this is what we're looking at right here is, um, and it's still kind of a prototype right now. I just have a basic kind of frequency display going. Let me see if I can get less glare. There we go. So you're looking at um, the software radio, and it's this little dongle on the side here, and there's a little antenna that it plugs into. And this is just displaying a real-time frequency view at a certain frequency. So this is tuned into 90.3 megahertz, which is an FM radio station up here in Seattle. And so you can see this huge spike in the middle. The middle is where that 90.3 megahertz is at. And then off to the left and right, they're kind of little smaller spikes that show some of the data um, in the FM radio signal. And so it's kind of neat. You can kind of see, you know, here's just a real-time view of this. Um, and I don't have an interface built yet, but I want to have a little UI where you can say, okay, you know, I want to change to, um, you know, 300 megahertz or 200 megahertz. Uh, and the bandwidth of it, which is kind of the range of frequencies at the bottom, it's uh, a megahertz right now. So it's doing about 2 million samples uh, per second. So uh, you can get about a megahertz of bandwidth. So it means that on the left here, this is frequencies from about like 89 megahertz all the way up to about maybe 91 megahertz uh, on the right there. And it's just showing a chart of the power or the, um, you know, the actual intensity of the each frequency. So it's running a Fourier transform um, internally and getting some of this data. So the cool thing, too, is that there's another view. If I click this, um, this is called a waterfall view. And uh, if it kind of focuses in, you kind of see um, uh, it's a view that s scrolls up over time. So each time it pulls in a sample, it scrolls up the display. And it's showing the same thing you were looking at before, but over time. So each line in here represents um, the distribution of frequencies. And the brighter the color, like the more red colors, are higher intensities. So in the middle, you can kind of see that um, big spike in the center. And then off to the left and right, you can kind of see the uh, side channels for it. So it's kind of a neat little thing. Um, and I'll do real quickly, we'll see if we can do a little demo. Uh, let me cancel it. And uh, I will run a new one. And this is at 315 megahertz. So this is a little car um, you know, key uh, remote opener. And what I'll do is when I press the button on here, you might see, you kind of see a little spike that happens in the center there as I press this. Um, and that's basically a little spike of the radio uh, intensity. So if I go into the waterfall view, uh, and it takes a little while for it to fill it up, but I'll just click it a bunch of times. And we should hopefully see in a second here a big spike with um, some red in the center. Yeah, you can kind of see a tiny, well, I guess it's a little tough to see on here. Um, 
But yeah, this view maybe isn't the best. Oh, well, actually here, there's a little bit of red uh, in the center of it focuses. So you can kind of see um, over time, you know, the uh, 315 megahertz radio signal as you click this. I think maybe this view is a little bit easier to see it. So, so it's doing uh, auto gain, and that's why there's all this noise because it's actually it, auto gaining or. Exactly, yeah. So it's well the the gain is fixed, but I'm scaling the display based on the highest intensity. So yeah, you see a bunch of noise here, and then when I click, you see kind of that big spike that jumps up. That's because there's this huge uh, increase in frequency at the center there. Uh, so it's uh, cool maybe a little bit kind of early uh, stages of this, but it's kind of cool. You can uh, you know play around and see what are all the different radio frequencies. Uh, it's it's not advanced enough, I think, to like decode any signals or things like that. But it's just cool to be able to see, you know, here's what uh, a radio station looks like, or here's what ice is, you know, might be emitting as far as uh, different radio frequencies. Okay, sweet. Thank you for the demo. All right. Next week we'll we'll get an update. We'll see how it goes. Oh yeah, yeah. A great project. All right. All right next, next up, up Noam Pedro. Noam Pedro. What you got cooking this week? Hey guys. Uh, next week we have something really nice to show. Um, Tell me about next week. <laughs> yeah, this is the thing Halloween costume. Uh, fall is upon us, so we're getting early with our Halloween projects. Uh, this is a cool project that sort of combines uh, the costume goggles with lasers and EL wires and pixels to uh, to make sort of a neat little wearable project. Did I say little? I meant big. It's a it's a big. <laughs> Hopefully, this one fits you, Phil. We'll send you over one for uh, next hey. week. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I mean, it's just the mouth part. Yeah, we'll see <laughs> how, how, how it fits. Uh, but this adding. Week, yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, adding there. But this week, uh, we've we've sort of compiled our top uh, Halloween projects for 2014, and we've sort of ordered them from hardest to easiest so people can get started on their projects early. That's right. We haven't been really working on easy ones with this. These take quite a while to build, so <laughs> we're giving you guys a head start. Okay. Yeah. Are you guys trying to show something on the screen? Because we just see you, by the way. Uh oh, oh crap! Can't I mean, I like you. I like you guys and everything. You guys I, are great. And I have a good imagination, but uh, nothing you wanted to display on the screen displayed, but you. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah there should be a video here. Oh no, yeah. Oh, well, there you go. Well, there it is. It's too late now. Uh -oh. <laughs> That's um, my Halloween well, costume. These are Halloween costumes. Totally fine. Stuff tomorrow on our show. Well, um, oh, they make just PM. Sure, yeah. <laughs> uh, very cool stuff to see. Uh, so we'll have to, people will have, have to, to they have to tune in now because you described it, but we only saw the end. It's totally okay. So, so it's a, it's a, a tie-up of all the projects you've been working on that can be used for Halloween that can be adapted or maybe just used as is? Yeah, yeah. And for the CAD tips, we're going to be going over the uh, uh, way we've been powering all this with the NinjaFlex little LiPo pockets, and we'll show how to Okay. Go. Good, good technique time. Also, uh, Comic-Con's coming up. So oh, yeah. There's always an event where you want to dress up, so definitely check out all those tips. Yes. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you so Next much. up, I was going to go to Roberto, but I think he dropped out. I think he's gone. Okay, we'll call him. Yeah, he, he kind of came in and came out. Yeah. All okay. right, let's get back to uh, C. Scott or Lon. I think we're going to go with Lon, and then after that, we'll... Lon, look at all these buttons. Yeah. Hey, Lon, how's it going? Hey, can you hear me? Yeah. Hey. Excellent. Got the reverse camera today. So uh, we finally got the game show base module working. So we got two teams of four. Uh, it's all on my high-tech console here. It's got some controls, a little knob that's not wired up yet, but that'll be used to select the game mode and the timers. Uh, I just put a little pro shield in there and cleaned up all the wiring, so it's all not loose wires and jumpers lying around anymore. Uh, and we'll do a little demo. So right now, it's I can read it at all. Initializing. So, all right. So the first mode is red. Red means it's something that the operator should do. So let's read the question. So you say, you know, oh, and the timer's going down. Player three buzzed in. And right now it's just, player, just number three. And we can say whether it was right or not. It was right. Then we award them points. Wow, and uh, we're using, using the resistor ladder model. Uh, and it's working out really well. Uh, can't see the buttons light up right now. I have them set kind of dim. <clears throat> I can see them. Yeah, they're glowing. They're glowing up. So that was the the team response. So someone on the team got it right. Uh, this one's in the dark area here. Yeah, you see it light up. So each one's got two neo pixels in it. Uh, we're using Cat Six to wire everything together, uh, and that 
you know, Cat6, you can do power over Ethernet, and uh, there's enough current to, to drive these. Um, I'm not lighting them all at full brightness right now, not because of the limit of the Cat6, uh, but because right now I'm just running the 5 volts off of the onboard power supply from the Arduino Uno. Uh, the next build of this will have a 5 volt input, and I'll have a separate rail for the, for the LEDs. Uh, and uh, that's the update on that. Okay. okay, it looks great. Excellent, Lon. The only thing that this project is missing is as seen on the show and tell sticker right on the front there. So I, I, I have a bunch I need to ask for, so I'll send okay. an email at some point here. <laughs> That's fine. All right. All right, I think Roberto just made it back. Hey, so Roberto. Roberto, you're back. Nope, oh, no sound. You're having a challenging so audio visual day. How about now? Can you all hear me? Yeah. Now we can hear you. Okay. Hey. Hi. Um, I can't get to the uh sh okay, here we go. <laughs> Uh, share, share, share everything. Forgot how to do that. Um, I don't know. All right. What do yeah, you see? we see you. Us. All right. Sorry. How no. about now? You see? We see some NetBeans IDE. All right. We're going then. Okay. So previously, I showed the um the Raspberry Pi uh, project I created. It does a time lapse, and it has a web app to control it, and so. What ended up happening was I got like directories full of images. Uh, these are actually some of the first pictures uh, it took, right? So I was like, wow, this is this is all well and good, but uh, you know, what am I going to do with them? So I wanted to make like an, an animated GIF, uh, and and I, I wrote an app for that. That's one of the companion apps. Uh, so let let me show that first. So this directory is what I'll animate, and then the application is. Uh, I just call it animated GIFs for now, and it presents you with a, a little user interface that uh, you tell it where the images are. Uh, with this button, you select. Um, are you still seeing everything? Yeah, yeah. Okay. everything's great. Okay. It's a lot of so that's, Ubuntu. That's where I have the images, and then I'll I'll hit the run button, and so something's happening. Something's happening. <laughs> it's tasking. Task force complete. It's thinking. It's got the little thinky thing. Or a screen froze. Oh, yeah, good point. It could be that. It's a trick. It's a <laughs> that was totally a trick. I thought it was just running, but I think it's... No, yeah. he's gone. Oh, no. Maybe he'll come back gone. and he'll show us the animated GIF. All right. So if he comes back, we'll, we'll tell him that we'll get back to him. It's but okay. let's uh, pop over to Adam now. Oh, crap. Okay. It's, okay, okay sorry, everybody. You completely cut out, so we're going to pop over to Adam. No problem. Hey, how's it going? Can you guys hear me okay? Hey, good to see you. Nice hey. Maker Faire t-shirt. We actually yeah, you. saw each other at Maker Faire. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to be presenting network interface failover over using a phone app. So the reason I did this project is because I have a home security system. Uh, it needs to be highly available, so I always need to be able to send messages over the internet in the event of a break-in. So if my internet connection goes down, or if there's a failure in the area, um, I need to have a secondary device. So we can see here that, you guys see that okay? Yeah. Cables. There's the phone. So the phone is turned off right now. It's connected to a Raspberry Pi. This is just over the GPIO. So I have a key pin connected to a GPIO pin so I can turn the phone on and off, and also a power status indicator so I know whether the phone is on or off. So I wrote a Python service here, and that's what I'm going to show on this monitor. You guys should be able to see that. Yep. Okay. So this is running in the background right now. Um, if I just run a status here, we can see that it's running. Here, I'm going to run a route-n command. So we can see that my primary destination here, 0000, is pointed at my 192.168.1.1 gateway, and that's going through my network interface on Ethernet 0. So everything's fine and good, behaving as normal. And I have a couple of static routes defined here, one going to the primary Google server and the other one going to the secondary uh, Google server, and those are both pointed at my Ethernet Zero interface. So what we're going to do is tail the logs here, um, and you can see that every 10 seconds I'm going out and I'm hitting those primary and secondary DNS servers, and it's letting me know that those routes are up, everything's good, everything's healthy. So I'm going to disconnect the phone from my Internet now. This is going to simulate an, an Internet outage, and what you're going to see here is that we're going to tear down the primary interface for that Ethernet cable, and we're going to try to set up a connection to Phona. So you can see, too, on the Phona, 
Blue lights came back on. Um, red lights blinking, indicating that we're trying to connect to the cellular network towers. And in a second here, once that's fully initialized, made, and I'm going to try to make an HTTPS connection out now um, to send me a message to my phone over that phone of connection. So why that's coming in, um, I got my phone out here, so we'll be listening for that notification. Um, it's actually really handy for, for even just network operators. They want to know when, yeah. the because like this happens all the time. Like their primary network goes down, and then it's like that computer can't notify you. Right. <laughs> so we can see now that the the interface came back up. This is the point to point protocol. Inter that out um, you're back the point to Ethernet zero and try to ping Adafruit you're going to see that it's going to fail it's going to say destination host is unreachable so that proves that that connection's down and we're, we're talking to phone and now and I just got a couple of messages on my phone here so we can see that phone is connected so that was through the Google Cloud messaging service Wow and so now what I'm going to do we'll go back to the logs. So you can see that the routes are still all down, um, and there's there's no up routes. I'm going to plug in that internet cable, and so now we should see that uh, the connection is now being able to be established. Phone is going to get tore down. So now my data plan is is no longer being used. Phone is turned off, and in a second here, a message should come in, letting me know that the primary connection has been restored. So I got a notification. I'm no longer using my data plan. So I'm going to open source all this code, put it on now, writing up an instructionable. So that's going to be on the Adafruit Learning Center. So look for that in the next couple of days. Okay. Yeah, this is Fa awesome. Fantastic work. You're yeah, better than great. like you're better than like ADT. Watch out because like <laughs> yeah, some like security company is going to like or some home no, security company well, is going to be like, oh, we're going to take this. And when we were to talking at Maker Faire, I, I made a joke, but it's true. It's like the next thing is so there was like Nest and then there was like Dropcam, but like this extra thing that happens next, like all these things that makers are doing yeah. with all these open source tools and all things available is like the next big thing. So yeah, good work, so Adam. Cool. Excellent work. Thank you. Yeah. All right, back to us. We're um, still here. Yeah, we're still here. But let's go to C. Scott since we have 10 minutes left. We'll try to go to Roberto if his internet comes back. But let's uh, see how wait, it goes. Wait, wait. Yeah, he, how he keeps coming back. Yeah, okay. Well, C. Scott, why don't you do a quick thing, and then we'll try to get to Roberto again. All right. Well, I'll, I'll be as quick as I can here. Uh, I've been working on a number of things, you know, some related to the Big 8 Voice project. But um, you know, I push about four projects at once, and i just show you since it all sort of interrelates what's happening here. Let me see if I can get the iPhone to flip cameras. Uh, okay. Working on synthesizer panels. Uh, this is a panel that I think I've shown you, but uh, I haven't shown anybody else yet. This is for a uh, single voice uh, synthesizer. This is a single HPGL engraving layer. You can send this to uh, Front Panel Express and have them um, uh, engrave it, or you can send it to your laser cutter and have it engrave it, what have you. Over here, I've been working on a couple of things in Tinkercad. This is a set of clips to hold uh, the NeoPixels, the ones that are in the uh, waterproof uh, uh, sleeve, because I want to clip them to this cabinet over here. There are vertical struts that hold the shelves, and you can see the NeoPixel string sitting there just doing a rainbow. But I want to hold it inside the case so that I can aim the light directly to the objects that are on display. Over here, I'm working on yet another panel in Adobe Illustrator. I'll as a PDF print of it, but uh, I'm, gonna, I'm getting ready to send this to Metal Photo to have them uh, print these, and then I'll put them in my bending brake and bend them up. This is for Moog-sized uh, modules. Most of the stuff I do, here's an example of um, one of my printed panels. Let me try and get some light behind it. Um, yeah, this one is a paint-filled engraved. They're not cheap, but they look really good. Um, mm -hmm. But it's the same thing as this over here. Just this is what a panel looks like once you get it back from the manufacturer. You take, like, for example, here's like one of my VCOs on its base plate, and it would go behind that panel. Everything bolts together. So um, using you know, real jacks, not three and a half millimeter jacks. But oh, and finally, I'm a bit of a scatterbrain today. But 
here is the uh, the um, WS218 1X uh, RGB controller I whacked out real quick. It'll use an LCD and three knobs and whatnot, so you can program the light string over there. That's it. Uh, wow. You love rep boards These and are good. panels. You have, intense. You're right. You're actually just like dropping four albums at once. You're just... <laughs> <laughs> it's a whole series. Oh, okay. Excellent work. Thank you so right. much. Hello. Sure thing. Here's another cat. Whoa, there's a cat. Yeah, there's another cat. All right, okay. Roberto, you're back, and it looks like you have sound and audio and everything. So you, the last, where we left, up, left you off last, you were about to make a GIF in Java Beans. Okay. Uh, yeah, hopefully the connection stays uh, reliable. Um, and I want to share everything. So. Well, we have a cat to look at while we're waiting, so yeah. everything's okay. fine. I feel Thanks. relaxed. To the cat cam. Do you see the net beans again? Uh, Almost. We see a white bar going across the screen. Yeah. Oh, white bar. Oh, That's kind of cool. Do not adjust the vertical. Do not adjust the horizontal. It's just uh, hangouts. Yeah. Well, let me let me just give you the background again. So, um, with the Photorama app that I wrote for Raspberry Pi, uh, I needed a way to make a animated GIF with um with the photos that it captured, and so I I wrote one. Uh, and here it is running uh, from NetBeans. I already have the code on, uh, on GitHub, but I still have to put the executable um, uh, link to it. So that I, I can get that out soon. Okay. Yeah, this so is where like we said, left off before. So you're about to you, you chose the directory, and now you're going to do okay, it. Okay, y'all saw that part. Okay. Yeah. So there's the path. Uh, there's that, and then there goes. Oh, I kind of pelican. Go 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 go. Hope it's a pelican. No, it's a, uh, sorry. I'm gonna cheese ball y'all out. It's just it's pictures I took while I was making Photorama, and I was the only, <laughs> I was the only one around. So the, the pictures are of me. You are the animation. <laughs> All right, so, it's yeah. task finished. Let's see the thing. Okay. Yeah, so it, 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 it's pictures like this. All right. I'm just gonna open up the animation. Yeah. Uh, of all the time for it to Java stuff, still looks the same. It's always kind of looked the same. Yeah. Got this like certain like color palette. The gray. Yeah. It's the gray and the. I'm expecting like a servlet manager. Remember they had like a mascot named Duke and like nobody understood what it and then was. Genie. Remember what Genie? was that? Okay. okay. Oh, here you go. All right. This All right, is it. Looking cool. So this is you making this thing. Yeah, I, that's what I was working on. And like I said, sorry to cheese ball you, but I was I was the only one around when I was doing it. So that's that's the pictures it took. Uh, so that's that, right? And like I said, it's a companion app to the Raspberry Pi. But notice that um, by default, the Raspberry Pi takes fairly large pictures, right? So 2.7, 2.8 megabytes. Yeah. And the combined one, I've noticed, gives about a 20% reduction. So uh, I'm sorry, not the combined. The animated GIF of the combined images gives a pretty big file. So 32 megabytes, I was like, how am I going to share that? So the other companion app that I wrote was a resizer. And so what that does is it'll go do the same thing, find a directory. Uh, uh, and resize everything uh, okay. by just copying everything in there. And then that's the path that I'll use to run this app. And, uh, I should have kept it open. Anyway, so here is uh, the image resizer. And currently it only does it by image quality. Eventually I'll, I'll let it say, okay, I want it, not only do I want it to reduce the quality, I wanted to uh, change the dimensions of the image itself. So now it knows which images it's going to change. It's going through the list of what it's working on. And when it's uh, done with the resizing, the resize button will uh, ena be enabled again. All right. So yeah, it's still going. And you can see in the directory itself, it's creating a new set of files that are that are uh, prepended with the name with the uh, the string a resize of and then the name of the original file. So if we have time, I just want to do the the animation again, but note uh, show how um, the image quality. Y'all still with me? Yeah, go for it. Awesome. If you could show it within a minute. Yeah, yeah, one minute. You can do it. Yeah, this is it right here. Okay. So I'm rerunning the same app, but this time on the resized images. Okay, and um, we could compare the size of it. <clears throat> All right. So here's the animator on the resized directory. And we'll run that. Uh-huh. 
task one, task two, task three. Get the tasking. It's tasking. <laughs> wait, wait. Yeah. Oh, wait, wait. Right. Tony's cat. <laughs> That's a cute cat. Oh, okay, we're back. All okay, right, so I, I, I had set a compression level of 50%, and so if you remember, the last one was 32 megabytes. Uh, or here it is, right here. Um, oh no, it's the same size. <laughs> Oh no! Like, file size demo. Well, you know what? It was ten megabytes just a second ago. Did you run it? Yeah. Um, I don't know what happened, but I'm pretty sure I'm in the right direction. If I clear it up, I'll let you know. We're gonna we're gonna send you a a, a seen on show and tell sticker, but it'll be twice the sizes. <laughs> okay. I'll be sure to reduce it. <laughs> okay. It's a cool project though. I, I like the little animated yeah. gift generator. I think it's interesting. You did it by hand instead of like trying to. Like use image magic, which which wouldn't have worked anyways. So yeah. you did the yeah, right no. thing. I'll get to the bottom of why it didn't uh, change size. So uh, I'll I'll give you an update. Okay. All okay. right. Well, we got to get out of here. Um, let's see, Matthew, come back next week, so you can be on the show and tell. We got to do Ask an Engineer now. Thank you, Tony. Thank you, Tony's cat. Thank you, Roberta. Thank you, Noah. Thank you, Lon. Thank you, C. Scott. And thank you, Adam. We're every single week, 7:30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Make sure you post a comment on the show and tell. Post on Google Plus every week, and we'll see you we'll next see you week. See you next week, and every week after that. Bye bye. Until the end of time. Meow meow. Bye, bye Carmen. Bye, Tony Scott. Meow meow. It's Carmen. Carmen. Bye.